Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we explore the secrets of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. This walkthrough will take you through the latest chapter at Playtime Co., revealing the location and contents of those lore-heavy VHS tapes, cardboard cutouts, and more. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the things you might have missed in Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Our first secret can be found while exploring the Home Sweet Home Orphanage, a building where the orphans resided after a day of play and learning in the play care. Upon entering this bedroom, we witness the sight of Kissy Missy sat on a bed, looking longingly at a photograph of a little girl. On the wall beside the bed are childlike doodles of Kissy. This suggests that Kissy has returned to the room she once lived in as an orphan at the play care and the girl in the picture was her before she was transferred into the body of a giant toy. It is also possible that this little girl was somebody Kissy was friends with, a child who died during the Hour of Joy, or as part of Playtime's nefarious experimentation. During the nightmare sequence that plays after first entering the Home Sweet Home Orphanage and inhaling the red smoke, we hear various radios around the environment telling the story of a mangled body found at the estate of the late Elliot Ludwig. However, there is one radio that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. A distorted audio loop plays from it, and beside, a message has been scratched into the floorboards which reads, Guilt haunts you. We can actually reverse this audio loop, at which point the following message can be deciphered. It seems our protagonist was once a worker at the Playtime Co. factory, someone who didn't show up for work on the day when the toys went on a kill-crazy rampage during the Hour of Joy. Could this be the prototype speaking to our protagonist through the radio waves, telling them to leave? The Smiling Critters were originally a line of plushy toys, who contained scented sprays within their zip-up bellies. Each critter contained a different scent, which was expelled in the form of a spray when their drawstring was pulled. However, we learned that one of these toys, Catnap, had an unknown spray included in its belly. One that had made national news after children exposed to it began having vivid hallucinogenic nightmares. Catnap was then pulled from store shelves and removed from all marketing. Of course, Playtime Co. wasted no time using these mascot designs as part of their own experiments, transferring the consciousness of orphan children into the critters to bring them to life, via a series of horrifying surgical procedures. Most of the bigger body variants of the smiling critters are now long dead, with Dog Day and Catnap the last remaining two. The former is found chained up inside the prison and quickly dies to the smaller, plush-sized variants, who now all follow Catnap to avoid death. Cutouts of these critters can be found throughout Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. When playing their audio, we hear cryptic messages, which seem to originate from the children trapped inside. Some cry for help, while others have lost their minds, now driven by a desire to kill. Let's take a listen to each of these cutouts. I'm Bubba Bubbafint. Hey, I remember you. An elephant always remembers. Want to know what I remember about you? <laughs> hey, I'm Chicken Chicken. Want to go outside and hang out? 
It's looking pretty bad outside. I've never been outside before. Will you come with me? I'm scared. Here, follow me. I'll step out first. You and I be friends. I'm Hoppy Hopscotch. Wanna try hopping to the moon with me? On three with me. One, two, three! Heh. <laughs> Didn't get very far, did we? Again! One, two, three! Nope. Still didn't make it. Listen, this won't stop until we make it to the moon. One, two... No, oh, no! Don't look at your feet! None of that matters! Again! Again! Jump! Jump! Dog Day says... Fetch! Go, go! As far as you can! Why are you... just standing there? You can't be here. You can't stay. Hi, I'm Crafty Corn. Can you help me with my painting? Pass me the blue, please. Thanks. Now, can you give me some red? More red, please. Out? But we can't be out. You're hiding more red from me. I know you are. Give it here! A hug a day keeps the monsters away. Two hugs a day is better in every way. Hugging forever. Hugs are non-stop. I'm gonna hug you until you pop. Mr. Light is a shambling, human-sized doll with a mutilated face who shuffles around the halls of the abandoned schoolhouse. We find a cutout of Mr. Light with the following voice lines. Hello, students. Find my sisters and I to learn facts across a variety of subjects. Press my button to hear some facts on anatomy. Did you know that there are 60,000 miles of blood vessels in the human body? For comparison, the Earth around the equator is almost 25,000 miles. The smallest bone in your body is the stapes in your ear. Still, damage it and you risk losing your hearing. Want to learn more about human organs? Pay close attention in class. Mr. Light was once a teacher of this school, tutoring the orphans who studied here. However, after the Hour of Joy, an event where the prototype influenced all the bigger body's experiments to go on a kill-crazy rampage around the facility, Miss Delight and her sister teachers found themselves locked in the building by Catnap. It seems Catnap wanted to make sure Miss Delight and the other teachers were kept from harming the children of the playcare. This is documented in a secret VHS tape we can find while exploring the schoolhouse. Take a listen. Where are the kids? Please, where are the children? 
children. Are they in the same place as the employees? No. Are the children safe? Yes. Oh. Can I see them? No. And that was it. That's all he'd tell me. <laughs> Probably because he knew I'd kill them all. <laughs> After being sealed away in the schoolhouse, a tragic and cruel fate befell Miss Delight, as she killed and ate her fellow teachers to stay alive. This is detailed in a series of secret notes posted around the schoolhouse. Here are their locations and content. Just a few weeks ago now was the Hour of Joy. Today there is only silence in this school. I don't think any of us here know what to do with it. The hallways with the children carry even the smallest sounds as if they were shouts. The other teachers and I startle each other constantly. We'll have to get used to it. Something locked the front door this morning. We haven't been able to get it open. I heard a knock at the door today. I heard it breathing. Whatever it was, it wouldn't speak when called out to. I spent hours after it went silent, wondering if this is what locked us in here. I've made a weapon of sorts. Pencils and rulers and tape and twine. I've taken to calling it Barb. It's crude, but if that door opens, I need to be ready. No food for days. The others argued with me over what was left. They started glaring, judging. They blocked the kitchen doorway with the bodies. I think they've singled me out to die first. The pit in me howls for food. I can't think about anything other than how hungry I am. Hardly have the strength to pick myself up now off the floor. Barb speaks to me though. She gives me strength. I found that if I stand still, completely still, everybody thinks I'm dead. Barb says I need to eat, and that the other teachers would never see me coming. Anything to stop the howling. I'm so sorry. I had to eat. I had to survive. I ate them. I had to. I had to. I had to. The door opened today, and I heard something enter the hall. Together Barb and I found Catnap waiting. All this time, all this agony, it was he who locked the door. I know it. I wanted to kill him. Burtz knew better than to believe I could. He seemed oddly glad to see I was all that remained. We made a deal. We take care of each other now. Report what we see to the other, and to him. As we journey through the playcare, we encounter a terrifying new enemy known as Catnap. This predator lurking in the shadows was once a little boy named Theodore Gramble, who became part of the Bigger Bodies initiative after he befell a terrible accident at the playcare while trying to escape from the prototype. Theo, now living on inside the body of Catnap, worships the prototype as his god, referring to him as the Angel of Salvation and carrying out the wishes of this mysterious entity. While exploring the cave system after leaving the schoolhouse when navigating this walkway, if we look to the left we can catch the sight of Catnap worshipping a crudely built statue of the prototype. Praying to his master, Catnap stands before this shrine, arms spread wide. If we examine the shrine a little closer, then we can see it is made up from body parts of a selection of dead toys, each killed by Catnap himself. These bodies are wired together with pipes and construction material. This is of course noteworthy as we have seen evidence of a prototype claiming the bodies of dead or dying toys in order to make them part of him. So, could the prototype be taking the powers from each of these toys and using them to grow stronger and more able? 
At the very top of the prototype shrine are the skeletal remains of a construction worker. This could hint at the human test subject within the prototype, who for a long while I have theorised was Playtime co-founder, the late Elliot Ludwig. This human skeleton certainly seems to symbolise an adult being used in the prototype experiment rather than a child, as we see in the other bigger body experiments like Kissy Missy and Catnap. Next up we have the Catnap VHS tape. This tape can be found inside a tent just after we enter the Playhouse segment of the chapter. It consists of an interview between Head of Innovation Leif Pierre and Catnap himself. Take a listen. Okay, this is Catnap, uh, experiment number 1188. What's his real name again? Ah, okay. <clears throat> hey, Theo. How you doing, bud? Normally I'd have Dr. Sawyer do this, but he's, uh, out, let's say. So you got me until they find his replacement. First off, congrats. This is officially your fourth year in your new body, and you've made some real progress, pal. I was told that when you and the other smiling critters, you know, dog day, picky piggy, yada yada yada, were added into play care, that you weren't really getting along too well with the kids like everybody else was. But look at you now. The kids love you. And that red smoke, I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? Is his, uh, voice thingy still broken? Theo, nobody's gonna save you. This prison is where you belong. We'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care, but your home is here. And as for the prototype, his home is in the labs. This is your life now. Get used to it. After entering the prison block within the depths of the playhouse, we can actually discover the cell where Catnap was contained, as referenced in the previous VHS tape. Through these doors is a hidden room containing a giant paw-shaped bed and many slain toys. This was where Catnap was held hostage by Playtime, only ever allowed out from time to time to mingle with the children he once knew as Theodore Gramble. And finally we come to the rest of the VHS tapes. Let's run down each and every one of them before we end this video. The first tape holds a conversation between child care worker Claire Harper and a playtime scientist. Miss Harper talks about a child under her care named Marie Payne, a child who eventually ended up inside the body of Mommy Longlegs. The recording details the terrifying effects of Catnap's sleeping gas, the red smoke which had been administered to this child. Miss Harper, please explain the situation. Spare no detail. Well, like any night, all the children were getting asleep. It was peaceful, quiet. Catnap had the red smoke in the room. Then suddenly, there was this scream. <sighs> Nightmares happen, I know, but this, I mean, dilated pupils and quivering lips. The way her eyes darted around the room, and I swear, her hand and mine, it felt like her blood was boiling beneath her skin. She saw something too, something horrible. She, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to. Miss Harper, we'll provide the very best care we can offer. You have my word, but this is important. Did Marie happen to describe what she saw? Yes, a monster, she said, said that it was colorless. I could feel the poor little heart pounding. For her, it was right there. A and her movements, they were so wild. Arms flailing, legs kicking. Hmm. I, I wanted to talk to her, see how she's doing. I, I just, I really need to hear her voice right now. That would not be advised, Miss Harper. There are many concerns we must address at this time. But vital, show normal. And we'll continue to monitor. She'll be okay. No! Well, pardon me if I'm not comforted by that. <laughs> Just bring my little girl back to me. 
After entering the home sweet home orphanage and inhaling a large dosage of red smoke, our character begins to hallucinate. They eventually reach a room with a VHS tape where an eerie voice welcomes them home. Greetings, employees, and welcome to your first day here in Playtime. We're certain that in the days to come, you'll find your new family here every bit as loving and supportive as your own. Feel free to wander the halls, sit in the mess for lunch, or watch our children play and learn to their little heart's content. Join the innovationists where the bounds of science are continuously pushed, or join the counselors of Playcare whose diligence and care for our children will help shape a brighter future. Just you see. Now, every one of you has your part in that future, so should you come back tomorrow feeling unhappy for where you are, or what you've done, worry not, for your supervisor is here and happy to listen. And, should you come back years later, your conscience finally getting the better of you, may you descend into the dark and the dust Finding all that awaits you are incomprehensible horrors, each hungry for your return, each eager that they might find you. Perhaps they'd smile at you from a shadow, their smiling mouths full of teeth and meat and plastic, watching and waiting patiently for their turn at a warm welcome. Or perhaps they won't allow you such time to figure your place in the world you'd left. A world that's theirs now. Welcome home. After the tape concludes, Huggy Wuggy emerges from the screen and chases us down. The next tape can be found while exploring the Home Sweet Home orphanage itself. In this tape, a child named Samuel is selected for experimentation and removed from the play care. None of the children were allowed to catch on to the terrible fate that would one day await them. Ah, and here they all are. Well, of course. They'd never miss this. Who's that, Mrs. Brooks? Who's going away? Oh, tell us. Shh, 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 shh. This week, Dr. White here has selected our very own Samuel Lee. Now, before he goes, let's all give Sam one last goodbye, shall we? With me. One, two, three. Goodbye, Sam. Another tape hinting at the child experiments being conducted by Playtime Co. scientists can be found in this room of the orphanage. We hear a scientist prepping a boy named Kevin for research, when all of a sudden, his friend walks in and has to be assured that nothing suspicious is afoot. Subject is stable. Designated 1322. Clear neural abnormalities were detected in his recent checkup. Though highly irregular, we've pulled him from the home sweet home just before lights out to perform. What are you doing with my friend? I... What are you doing out of bed? How did you get in here? Is Kevin sick? Why did you take him away? I... I... Yes. Kevin is very sick. Very, very sick. But we want to make him better. But he can only get better if we take him to where we can provide proper care and give him proper rest. Well... Do you really think you'll be okay? I should think so. We're good at what we do, son. We paid attention in school, learned, and got our proper rest when we needed it. Just like you need it now, I should think. Come now, let's get you on back to bed. Okay. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Joseph. And I promise you, your friend will be all right. When you see him again, he'll have never been better. After entering the caves located outside the Playcare Dome, we happen upon an audio log from Rich Avery and his supervisor. Rich is a character we have heard from several times before in the story of Poppy Playtime, and it seems he finally began rising through the ranks thanks to the help of this particular co-worker. You stupid clunky elevator. What was that, Richie? 
Nothing, nothing. Let's just get this shipment dropped and go. I take it you're not a fan of this place, are you? Nope. Never liked the feel of it. I mean, don't you think these kids deserve some real sunlight instead of floodlights and painted skies? Hell, we're not even allowed to talk to these kids. Isn't that... <clears throat> <sighs> Sorry, Stu. Sorry? <laughs> that doesn't sound like the rich I know. Well, trying to stop being so pissed off all the time. My wife says I'm a lovely man, but I gotta control my temper. So, I'm doing it for her. <laughs> You're just different, Rich. Honest to a fault. But uh, I always liked that about you. Yeah? <laughs> well, you're one of the few. Uh, you know, Richie, with my retirement coming up, uh, they've been pushing hard for me to choose my replacement. I'm thinking about giving the role to you. But, uh, really? Really? Nothing official yet. But I think there's a decent guy beneath all that graph. An honest, hard-working man. You prove me right? I said your chances are pretty good. Wow. I, uh... Jeez, I don't know what to say. I, I'm just glad to see not everyone in this place has it out for me. Not everybody, Rich. Not everybody. While making our way through the Counselor's building, we come across the office of Head of Playcare, Stella Graber. Here we discover an eerie recording, where a couple look to adopt an orphan at the playcare named Jeremy, but discover he has been taken away for testing and is no longer available. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Hartman! Come on in! Please, have a seat. How was your ride down? It was, uh, nothing like we were expecting. Uh, Mr. Ludwig's speech was, well, it just confirms for us that you're the orphanage we want to go through. It's a truly magical place. I felt right at home from the second I entered. You opened that door the first time and you just know. You're never going to leave. Kind of like finding a home as a child and always thinking of it when you want to feel comforted. <clears throat> I understand you want to give Jeremy that home? Yes, and we would like to adopt. Ah, amazing! You'll be perfect for... Oh. What? Well, it appears there's been some complications. Complications? <laughs> What kind of complications? I... I don't know. Um, the form says... testing. <laughs> what does that mean? Tell us, what does that mean? Miss Graper, we deserve a better explanation than that. Don't you think? You're in charge of all this! How could you not know? And why are we only finding out about this now? I... I don't. I'm sorry. Also in this building is the creepy emergency broadcast recording that played out during the outbreak at Playtime Co. Check it out. The following message is for all Playtime Company employees. At 11.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an unknown hostile force was declared present within the Playtime Company facility. Personnel are to begin enacting emergency evacuation protocols immediately. Leave all personal belongings. Do not engage with any hostile individuals. If no exit path is available, seek shelter in a hidden location. Use blankets or pillows to cover your body and remain silent. Do not look through any windows. Do not open doors for any individuals. Do not make eye contact. Towards the end of the chapter, we reach a power room in the gas production factory. Here we discover a recording between a researcher and the prototype himself. 
We even hear the prototype speak for the first time, able to mimic the different voices of those he has assimilated into his being. Log code 24459. In relation, experiment 1006. The prototype. Stubborn as he is, and always silent with each passing session, I'm still uncovering fresh data nonetheless. Today's discovery... Hmm. End of log. Hmm. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess... A question. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? <sighs> this question referred to what exactly? You stick us, beat us, tear at flesh. Do you feel it? There is a secret inside you, 1006. Valuable beyond all measure. I cut and prod and burn at it. And I get closer with each session. So speak. Oh, don't. Fight. Or give in. Regardless, I learn something new about you every day. <laughs> it excites me. Thank you. You thank me? Absolutely. I learned something new about you every day. The final tape is played by Poppy herself at the very end of the chapter. It shows the horrifying sight of the massacre that occurred during the Hour of Joy. Check out this chilling footage of the incident. And with that, we come to the end of this look at the secrets and collectibles found throughout Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.